Today, I am in the middle of nowhere. It's wilderness. We're about four hours south of Sydney. And I've just waved goodbye to Stephen. He is heading on a two-day wilderness walk east, that way, towards the coast. And I am driving to the meeting point, which means tonight I camp solo for the very first time. Well, I do have my trusty co-pilot Roscoe with me, but that baby is not totally solo. But before we get to the camp spot and set up, what we're going to do is I'm going to explore a few places along the way. In the 2019-2020 Black Summer bushfires, Nerega, along with many other towns across Australia, were severely affected. Many people had to escape their homes and they holed up in the hotel here to survive. The hotel was constantly under ember attack and it was a difficult time for all. The little memorial here has a timeline of the fires and the devastation people went through. It has some lovely little bits as well, like a photo of a water cart driver who saved a koala. And then it ends on a positive note with the thank you day, where they thanked everyone that participated in helping people survive and continue on afterwards. Seems like everybody has got on the road now. It's just past 10 o'clock and there's cars and caravans everywhere. So that's Narraga, and now I'm heading on to Tianjara Falls. Okay, that is Tianjara Falls. There's no water at the moment, so you could, I don't know, easily abseil it. But what I do like at this lookout is this little bit here where you walk up and then you can stand over the height. So the falls are 65 meters high and then they lead down into the Endrick Wilderness. This bit of wilderness here, we once did an epic walk in. We walked down the side of a mountain that took forever. It was really difficult. It was basically like rock climbing. Then we camped at a creek, beautiful creek, except there were snakes that decided they wanted to come at you all the time. I mean, snakes never do that. They go away. But these snakes, they were crossing the river. They were going this way. They were sleeping on the bottom. They were jumping up everywhere. It was quite insane. And then when the walk out was even harder through shale that just kept moving and moving and you're on hands and feet trying to get up there so i don't like that bit well that's the falls done so now it's about 20 k's to the coast and go down the main highway all right let's go Wow, dogs are allowed on leash. Yay, Roscoe. So we've made it to Mollymook Beach. It's lovely. It's a bit windy. The dog's going crazy because I think he wants his lunch. Well, We've had a good explore of Molly Mook. Lots of big houses here. All the retirees, you know, they're going between the golf club, the bowling club. I don't know, maybe Rick Stein's and Bannister's, fancy restaurant. We've had hot chips, and now we're heading that way back into the wilderness to set up camp. Oh, 
Well, the last 10 k's have been really windy, really bumpy, but I think I'm getting near the campsite now. It's three o'clock. You can tell it's just getting a little bit cold. So I've parked just a little bit up from the cold sump down there. Tonight, I am going to be sleeping in the car. I decided to not bother with a tent. And so my first solo expedition, I've also got to work out how to get all this stuff arranged into something comfortable. Let's see how I go. Okay, in between chasing cows and chasing the dog, I've set up my camp. Let's have a look. And here it is. So I've got my thermarest, my really warm sleeping bag, a special spot at the back for the dog, my matching schnauzer pajamas, a little table with my projects under here, my charging up here, my phone's already on to charge, oh, hello dog, and a little light so that I can have something light at night. And then this is my big torch, which is for spawning animals. Let's hope I find some animals tonight. So for dinner, I'm having something new. It's called backcountry cuisine and it's freeze-dried for to meet the energy needs of outdoor adventurers now i don't know if i'm an outdoor adventurer today but i want to try this out because that's what steven's eating too so i've got vegetarian stir fry and he's got vegetarian shepherd's pie so let's see how it works so i've got the water boiling Quickly. A cup of water. I'm going to mix it thoroughly. And I'll cool that thoroughly. To seal the top, don't you? I've got to squeeze out any air. Gee, it's really hot. And seal the top. Well, that was pretty easy. Now let's look at the time. Right, I've got to wait 10 15 minutes and then give it a go. The dog's found a wombat hole. It doesn't look like a oh my god. I think, yes, the many wombats live here, Roscoe. And they'll be keeping us awake all night, won't they? Okay, it's been 15 minutes. It feels warm, it feels quite solid. It actually feels like a lot. I'm gonna cut the next bit off and make it into a bowl. Less washing up, how good is that? Oh, I can smell the corn. Also, I've got croutons. Let me show you inside. There you go. So, let's taste it. It's alright. It's almost like a minestrone soup. Which I love. Tastes delicious. Wow, that's that's good. Oh yeah, you can feel the taste the honey in it. Mmm. Okay, it was way too much, but I'm sure I'll eat it. 
This is perfect. 10 out of 10. My dinner was delicious. Now it's time for tea in my new Keep It Warm cup. And then animal spotting. And then bed. Oh, what? You want to go to bed now? No, not yet. He's so silly. You just see our first wombat. Okay, we've been off chasing animals. We saw one wombat with the mange, hurt, and there's another dead wombat down there, and that's it. The cows have walked off back to the farmer, and it started lightly raining. So we've made it into bed, and now it's time to have a sleep. Good night.